Hey guys, Adam here with americantrucks.com and today we're taking a closer look at and installing the Corsa closed airbox cold air intake with the dry tech 3D dry filter available for the 14 to 18 Silverado 1500 with the 5.3 motor. You should be checking this out for your own 5.3 if you're looking to replace the factory restrictive air box with a cold air intake that's going to not only save you some money in the long run, but one that's also got a reusable and washable dry filter. It's going to bump up some horsepower and torque numbers, give you a better throttle response and acceleration, and overall give you a more efficient engine. Now this particular option here from Corsa uses a completely enclosed air box, making sure your air box is blocking out all all of the engine bay heat from your filter while keeping in all of the cold air, keeping your intake temperatures down. Now, lower intake temperatures result in a more efficient engine, which in turn produces more power. So you can expect a horsepower and torque bump with this. Now it's a no tune required intake. So right out of the box, you can throw it right onto your 5.3. Because of that reason, we're not strapping it down to the dyno today, but do know that it does result in a nice power gain that you can definitely feel. Now the particular filter in this Corsa option is their DryTech 3D dry air filter. Now the DryTech 3D info, I'll be giving you a little bit later on in the video, comparing it to the stock paper element drop-in filter. But right up front, know that it does have a superior cotton gauze or polysynthetic filter element that's going to help filter out all the particles you don't want making its way into the engine bay, robbing you of your power, but it's also going to keep in all of that cold air. So great option for the guys located, especially in those dry weather climate areas that would otherwise have to clean out an oil filter a little bit more often than not. The dry filter is a great alternative and it's definitely something you can reuse and wash out when it comes time for routine maintenance. You can expect an injection molded tubing. It's a little bit larger diameter than your factory, less restrictive, of course, and the air box there, of course, is completely enclosed. The top lid here is acrylic and see-through, so you can check on the condition of your filter, but it's a little bit tinted, so it has that stealthier look under the hood. In my opinion, it looks pretty good under here. The install is gonna get one out of three wrenches on our difficulty meter. Anybody can tackle it in the driveway at home with very simple hand tools. It'll take you about an hour or so from start to finish. I'm gonna take you through every step of the process. What do you say we get started? Tools used in this install include an impact gun or a ratchet, a couple of different size extensions, eight and 10 millimeter deep sockets, T15 Torx bit, Phillips head screwdriver or Phillips head bit for your gun, and a panel removal tool. First couple of steps here, we gotta get our factory intake off, so pop your hood, and we're gonna focus on removing these breather lines here. There's one on each corner of this air box here. What you're gonna do is basically push up on the gray tab from the bottom and pull back and out, just like that. Do the same thing for both of these. And it's the exact same process, just flipped. So instead of pushing up from the bottom, you're pushing down from the top and popping that off. All right, now we gotta get our sensor harness off. So pull up on this red locking tab. You'll hear it click, pinch, and disconnect. All right, next up, let's loosen the clamp holding the intake tubing here to the throttle body. I'm gonna use an eight millimeter socket and my impact gun, but you can also use a flathead screwdriver if that's what you have. All right, so we're not completely removing it, just loosen up that clamp. Next, we're doing the same thing to the clamp holding the tubing to the air box here. It's right next to our sensor, so just loosen up that clamp as well. And once you have that loosened up, you can just wiggle that tubing right off to disconnect the two pieces. All right, so now you should be able to just lift up on that middle section, disconnecting it from the throttle body and set it aside. All right, so the air box is loose, but we do have to disconnect this wiring harness. That's on there with a tree clip right there, so just wiggle that back and forth and pull that off. Ours has been taken off a whole bunch, so it's pretty loose. So we can just put that aside. Next, we're gonna take off these two push pin clips on top of our shroud. The only thing really keeping this guy in is this bar here. It's got a little bit in the way. We're gonna to have to take it off for the install anyway. So what I'm gonna do is remove these two pins, peel back the shroud just to expose this bolt here, holding this bar on, and we'll remove the bolt. If you find it easier, you can take the entire shroud off, but it shouldn't be completely necessary. All right, so I'm just using this panel removal tool, pry up on that middle section, just like that. Go up underneath and pull it up in one piece. All right, now that we have those two out of the way, let's peel this guy up a little bit. Just be careful not to damage it. You wanna get this bolt out of the way with your 10 millimeter socket. All right, so this is still pretty tight, so I'm just gonna break this 10 millimeter loose on the body side of the vehicle. So let's just crack that loose. We don't even need to remove it. Just loosen it enough that we can swing this guy out, up and out of the way. At that point, we can lift this entire piece off and set it aside. Now you have to play the game getting it around all the lines there, but once you have it out, let's set that aside. All right, next up, we actually have to remove this bottom plate that mounts the air box to the floor here. Now, there are four 10 millimeter bolts, one really in each corner. So just grab your extension and 10 millimeter socket and get all four of those off. That might be a little bit difficult to see at this point, but just know that each of the corners has its own bolt and you can just get all four of them out. All right, 
lift that plate up and we're good to move on. All right, so we got our factory intake taken apart and off of our 14 Silverado and it's on the table here next to our Corsa closed airbox dry filter. Now I wanna take you through some similarities and differences between the two kits and I first wanna start off with our filters. Now I took apart that airbox here from the factory to show you guys what the filter looks like. This is a dry paper element drop-in filter that's very common off the factory line from a lot of manufacturers. It's perfectly capable of filtering out particles you don't want making its way to the engine bay, but it's not really optimized for pulling in cold air and bringing down intake temperatures. What I want to show you guys first is the difference between these two filters. Your new Corsa option is a conical dry tech 3D dry air filter and that technology comes with a unique pleating geometry along with a hydrophobic polysynthetic fiber that's going to help filter out all of the particles you don't want making its way in while making sure it's cooling down the intake temperatures making sure your engine can use up a lot more of its potential to produce more power. Now at the end of the day those are a lot of words that don't mean a lot to many people and what that basically means and I want to break this down for you is that this filter is going to do a whole lot better job cleaning out all of the air coming in but allowing the most cool air to make its way through. It uses a synthetic technology here from Corsa that's unique to their build. While it looks like a lot of the other filters in the category, it's going to perform a little bit better and it's good for what they say is up to 50,000 miles depending on your driving conditions. With this filter, it's 100% reusable. Your factory filter does need to be replaced after so many miles, which is something that you get when you pick up a paper element filter. It just doesn't last as long. So when it comes time for your routine maintenance, you can pop this guy off vacuum pressure wash it with some air and throw it right back in and because it's a dry filter you don't have to oil it it's definitely better for the guys located in a area that maybe sees a lot of air pollution somewhere in the desert climates or the west coast of the united states because that's going to make it a whole lot easier oiled filters while they do a great job and they're one of the more best of both worlds type of filters they can tend to get clogged up a bit more when it sees a lot of air pollution dry filters are good for that type of climate either way huge difference over your factory option and it's going to produce a little bit more throttle response and acceleration simply based off of that. Now as far as the rest of the tubing here on the table, this is an injection molded air box along with tubing. The tubing is a little bit larger of a diameter from your factory one, but it still does not require a tune to make happen. This obviously looks a whole lot different than your new air box here and your new tubing setup from Corsa. This is going to be a little bit more restrictive than your new air box. This guy here, especially with the flex tube, is going to slow down that flow of air which can rob you of some power you would otherwise get with a new air box. This guy here also uses a clear acrylic top. Now that lens is going to give you the ability to check on the condition of your filter. You'll be able to peek at it just by popping the hood and seeing whether or not that filter looks extremely dirty and whether or not it's time to clean it off. Now this guy is going to be super easy to put together. We're going to start here transferring over the factory sensor you see here onto your new tubing with some of the hardware included. So what do you say we get started? Now getting this sensor off is pretty simple. There's just two screws holding it on. Now, as you can see, ours looks like one of these has been replaced. So they're two different ones, but you should have two of the same kind of head. I have a Phillips head screw here and a Torx bit screw there. So I'm just going to use my T15 to get this guy off. Just make sure you're using the appropriate tool for whatever screws you have installed on your sensor. They should be easy enough to get off by hand, just like this. I'm gonna set that factory one aside. We do have new screws that we're gonna be using, but it's a good idea to keep the factory ones on deck in case you ever wanna revert back to stock. You're gonna need them in order to install this back in. Carefully pull the sensor straight out, and set it down, and we can toss this guy aside. Reinstalling your sensor into your new tubing here is pretty simple. Grab that rubber gasket, and you're gonna feed it over the sensor just like this. Make sure that the holes are lined up. If they're not lined up, just flip it and put it back on. Now we can insert this into the slot. Now you wanna make sure these holes are lining up. It really only aligns one way. So again, if it doesn't, just flip it the other way. There are new Phillips head screws in the kit. So you wanna make sure you're using those guys. Grab your screwdriver and set that guy in place. Now before I tighten that guy all the way down, I'm gonna make sure that the other one threads through as well. All right, make sure you have that all the way down so the gasket puts pressure on it so it doesn't have any air leaks. All right, next up we're gonna install our silicone coupler here. This guy is gonna be going on the throttle body side, this little elbow piece. The coupler you wanna be using is the one that steps down to a little bit of a smaller outlet. I'm gonna to toss this guy over the end here. Just make sure it's seated all the way on. Grab one of the clamps included in the kit. I'm gonna feed that guy on. 
Now what I like to do is just imagine this tubing is installed on the vehicle and just focus the head of that clamp upward so it would be easily accessible in the vehicle or under the hood. I'm gonna use an eight millimeter socket, but a flathead works as well, and I'm gonna tighten that down. All right, now once we get in the vehicle, the other end is gonna get this smaller clamp just like that. So I'm just gonna set that in place now, but not tighten it down. Now we're gonna do basically the same thing on the other side. The only difference is I'm gonna put my clamp on first and then feed this guy on. All right. Now you wanna be inserting this so that this tubing sits somewhere in the middle here where that lump is. That's gonna connect both sides of the tubing. All right, so once you have that in place, put your clamp in, tighten that down. All right, just to make life easier in the long run, I'm actually gonna take off this plate here, this plastic or acrylic plate. What we're gonna do is grab a Phillips head bit from my impact gun, but a Phillips head screwdriver works as well. Get all four of these screws off. It's just gonna make life easier in the long run installing our filter later. Keep in mind that each one of these screws has a little gasket on the bottom there, just to help with making sure there's no air leak. Carefully take that off and just set it aside. Now we can put this air box under the hood. All right, starting the install here under the hood, drop your air box in. And now that we have that factory bottom plate off from the uninstall section of the video, this guy is just gonna seat right in. Just make sure you're clearing all those lines. And you'll see that there are two holes at the bottom here. The top two bolts that held on the factory mounting plate, you're just gonna put those bolts right back through the holes here and it's gonna keep this in place. All right, now it's pretty impossible for you guys to see on camera, but if you look straight down, there are holes at the bottom of this air box. I'm just gonna take two of these factory 10 millimeters and put them back through the bottom there. Before I tighten one down, just make sure you have both threaded in so you can keep it exactly where you want it. I've got my extension in my 10 millimeter. I'm gonna tighten this guy down. Right, same thing on the other one. Perfect, so now that's secure. All right, just a quick heads up here. I did test fit our tubing here. And what I did was I ended up loosening up the two bolts we put down here in the air box just to make this have a little bit of room for adjustment. Now what we're gonna do is drop our tubing in, connect the coupler to the air box side first. Make sure that's seated. Bring this down and it's a little tight, but we're gonna wrap this guy around our throttle body and push it on. You may need to loosen up this clamp here in order to make the adjustments needed for it to snap on. But once you have both sides seated fully on, grab your eight millimeter socket or your flathead and tighten down the clamps. Okay, I'm gonna crack this guy loose just to make sure we can line it up properly. And same thing on the airbox side. Next step, let's install our filter. Now I'm gonna put our filter clamp over the end here, and that's one of the largest clamps in the kit. Drop that guy in, but you wanna make sure that the silver line here in the filter element is facing down. We're gonna go top first, going down, bring it around and hug around that coupler that's pre-installed into the air box. All right, so this can be a little tricky, but grab your socket or your flathead and tighten down the clamp. All right, next up, we might as well just put our lid back on. So I'm gonna put that acrylic lid lining up those holes, take the Phillips head screws along with their gaskets. I'm gonna thread all of them in by hand at first just to make sure everything's lined up properly. All right, once you like the position, grab your Phillips head and tighten them down. You wanna make sure you're not over tightening these guys just so you don't crack the, a, a plastic uh, lid here. All right, let's just swing that bar back over on top of the air box, lift up on the shroud and reconnect that to the frame here. Grab your 10 socket and tighten that down. All right, tighten down both sides. All right, let's just put those two push pins back here on the shroud to finish that section up. 
All right, now one of the first things we did in the very beginning was crack off this hose here just by pinching and disconnecting. We're gonna now do the same thing on the end that's connected to the valve. So just pinch at the base and disconnect. Now we're gonna replace that with the shorter hose included in the kit. Put that guy straight on all the way and connect it to the hose fitting that's stuck to the tubing. Make sure they're both seated all the way down. Same thing for the other one here. So just rotate, pinch and disconnect. Grab the longer hose, seat that all the way down here, and then connect it to the port on the other side of the tubing. All right. All right, last couple of steps. Grab your hose retainer included in the kit here, and you're basically gonna retain these two hoses up here just like that. Take one side here, insert the hose, spin it around so it hugs the other side like that. One, two, just like that. Finally, your harness for the sensor. Plug that guy in, you'll hear a click, push down the red locking tab all the way, and you're good to go. That's gonna wrap up my review and install for the Corsa closed airbox cold air intake with the Drytec 3D dry air filter available for the 14 to 18 53 Silverado 1500. Pick yours up right here at americantrucks.com.